goals for yourself so that you don't spend 10 hours scrolling aimlessly, right? So when we set up goals, what are the types of goals that we're talking about? In a real estate context, it may be setting up a number of appointments, getting an X number of leads. Maybe it's getting a number of views on a particular video that you're posting. A lot of people don't understand though, if they don't set some goals, they have no idea where they're going. So you just have no idea what you're gonna get yourself into until you start out with something. And the very first thing that I can recommend for everybody is to identify your target audience. So if you don't already have this, no matter what your business is, I suggest that you identify your core client profile here. This is about a one page document that I've drafted up, which goes through my ideal client. His name's Eric Johnson. He's a 32 year old IT manager. He's married with one child. He's looking in a suburban area. He wants a commuting distance to the urban center, dual income household. He's already pre-approved. He's got a 700 credit score, right? And so I have drilled this profile down to the point where I know the psychographic and the sociographic profile of my ideal client so that I know their age, their location, their income levels, as many different things as I possibly can so that when I put something out in social media and I put it out into the world, I know that it's going to resonate with my core client. So that's the very first thing that I can tell you. You're your own person. Just like Lexi and Shanna have their own personality, make sure that comes through in your profile and don't just post about work. This is one of the things that uh, I think it's very easy for people to resonate with you if you come off as being natural. So the next thing about social media that I recommend is choosing the right platform. Just like you know who your audience is, you need to know where your audience is. So for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, these are my core audiences. I am constantly on these platforms. Some realtors are using TikTok. Now I may caution you against being on just one social media site, especially if it's TikTok with the current situation right now. You may wanna cross promote yourself on more than one platform, but I think you should focus. Facebook is a really, really good spot for me to be with my core demographic, 35 to 45, married with children. So if I don't know what I'm doing, how am I gonna figure out what I'm supposed to do, right? So one of the very first things I did when I got in this business is I found somebody that was already doing what I wanted to do. They were making awesome TikTok videos. I connected with them and they were one of my very first referral sources when I got into this business. So that's the next thing is, Optimize your profile. I cannot tell you how many times that I have went on a realtor's website or a lender's website and I've been looking for their contact information. I want their cell phone number. I want their email address. Maybe I want information about a listing that, that I know that they just had. I can't find out anything about these people, okay? If you go to my social media, my contact information is right at the top of the page. Now, some people will say, Travis, I have a business page and I have a personal page, but I'm gonna tell you right now that it doesn't matter because everybody is going to your personal page and they're checking it out. So make sure that your personal page is your business page. You can have a business page too, but I recommend that you live in that business world on your personal page. And it's not always about real estate. That's the most important thing. Be yourself, but don't be a secret agent. So this is the next thing I hear agents tell me all the time. Travis, what am I supposed to post, right? I have an open house, I have this, okay. Well, here are some of the content strategies that I've developed that help me when I'm wondering what should I post. What is my target audience? That's the very first thing. What would they wanna see? I'm an engineer by trade. I spent 20 years working for companies and I'm very particular. I want my clients to know that I'm very particular and that when we go look at a house, my engineer hat's gonna be on and I'm gonna be pointing out all the problems in that house. So one of the things that I do is I make it a habit to post and I do it all the time. A lot of you guys probably met me from social media, right? And so what, where is that content coming from? It's gonna be listings properties that I'm already going out and showing, I'm going to make a video, especially if my client's not buying the house. If I'm hoping, hosting an open house, that's great. Cool features on houses that I see, I'll make a video. I try to do educational content. Dan's been my real estate mentor. He's taught me a lot about real estate. And so I try to share back with other agents in this business. I try to help everybody as much as possible so that we can all thrive. I think that we all win together. We're all in this business together. Behind the scenes, I go behind the scenes. I'll show my wife doing work 
maybe it's not always me doing work every once in a while you'll catch me with a shovel in my hand local insights if there's something going on in the community i'm kind of starting to specialize in aviation right now so i'm doing a lot of i'm going to be going to air shows all summer long so you'll see me at all the air shows uh, and then maintain the consistency in your posting and the timing this is something that people always also get wrong you can post three times a day it's not wrong Okay, now you may say, oh, that's too much, Travis. We'll switch it up a little bit. Post content in the morning, post a picture in the afternoon, post a video in the evening. It doesn't always have to be the same thing. So this is the next trick, and this is what I call the good stuff, right? This is kind of a dark art of social media. If you guys haven't figured this out, some people may get 100 likes on a photo, and some people may get two likes on a photo. And you look at it and you say, well, how come that photo did so well? How come so many people engaged to that? One of the most important things I can tell you is to have an engagement pod. What does this mean? This is people that are liking, commenting, and sharing your posts, especially from other geographic locations. One of the things that drives the algorithm nuts is when you have people from across the country that are engaging with your content. So always expand your audience as much as possible. A lot of people are hyper-focused on Fort Wayne. Go bigger. That's the best advice that I could possibly give you. So with that engagement networking, you're going to want to also ask yourself, are you engaging with the people on the other side? You want them to engage with you, I'm gonna tell you right now, you better engage with them. Because my wife and I, we don't always see each other's content. We live in the same house, but if you're not engaging with people, they're not gonna see your stuff. So that's the next trip that I'm gonna give you guys is join networking groups, join Facebook groups, network with other agents, and come to events like MOVE right? Because this is a great opportunity for you to cross promote other businesses. Work with coffee shops. Coffee shops, a great resource for me. I have a coffee shop that refers me business on a regular basis because I'm in there all the time. So this is the next thing. I think that, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with video, right? Uh, but if you're not comfortable with video, you really should get comfortable with video. Today's world is a TikTok generation. Everybody wants a one minute clip and they want to be entertained quickly. I probably already lost some of your attentions before this presentation is going to be done at seven or eight minutes. But the people that are listening past one minute, those are clients. So make sure when people are listening after a minute that you're selling yourself because that is the magic. Okay, so the next thing is if you can identify a trend, you can Google, what's a trending song? What's a trending video for summer? Copy the video. I call it R&D, rip off and duplicate, okay? So this is the last thing, and I'm gonna close it out here with this. This is the best advice that I could possibly give you. In, in everything, not just social media, but focus on the relationship. Social media is about building a following, and I like to feel like I'm part of the family. When I see people at events, I say, hey, how's your daughter? You know, I saw that they just had a, a volleyball match. I saw that you just got back from a trip from Costa Rica. How was it? What was one of the takeaways from the trip? Become part of their life, okay? And this is the last thing I'm gonna leave you with. This is the best piece of advice I ever think I got was as I heard Joe Rogan say, pretend like you have a documentary film crew following your life success story and make Facebook your journal. But don't just share your successes, right? Share your wins, your losses, the ugly. Be a person. So if they don't know who you are, they can't work with you. So that's it uh, for me.